man. Man, oh man, oh man. I can't stay away longer than three weeks before I have to come in here and talk more about the Raiders because they have not seemed to stay out of the news since I've gone off camera. Now, I haven't been on here to really talk about anything that has gone on the past three or four weeks. So that means that while, you know, everybody else was going ahead and talking about what was going on in the news with the Raiders, uh, I happened to be trying to get everything prepared for my season that happens to be coming up for the lawn care season down here in Texas. Probably got about, I don't know, two or three weeks. So everything had to get part up and messed with and basically just fine-tuned for the upcoming lawn care season. Now, in that time that I was out there trying to get my truck fixed and get everything all situated with the lawn mowers and the weed eaters and the blowers and all that stuff that I need, the Raiders can't seem to stay out of the news. Now, first... Because I wasn't on, you know, I wasn't really talking about it. But of course, I was watching all the other podcasts and listening to everybody else talk about the Stephen A. Smith and Derek Carr drama. And all of that jazz that was basically there just to keep the Raiders in the news. Now, if anybody doesn't know that story, of course, how it all played out is Stephen A. and Max Kellerman were talking down upon Derek Carr. Derek Carr took offense to it, jumped on Twitter, talked about wanting to fight both of these guys in a UFC octagon, and he tagged Dana White in a tweet. I mean, of course, if if you didn't hear the story, then you've been under a rock somewhere. Uh, it blew up the lines for at least two weeks. I mean, it's all they talked about. It was back and forth in between both parties until finally it died off. Now, well, it didn't have anything to say about that. Because for the simple fact, I knew exactly what it was. In my opinion, it's just there to keep... For for one, those those dudes shouldn't have been saying anything. If I'm going to say anything about this, Stephen A. Smith and Max Kellerman have no grounds into talking about what it's like to be a franchise NFL quarterback who has made it to this level to play at this level and to actually sit there and tell this man exactly that, that he doesn't have the heart to play. That's absolute horseshit, and we all know that is the Raider Nation, and we know that they're basically just trying to poke a pile of shit to see if they can get it to stink. Which is a lot of exactly what has gone on this week in the news for the Raiders, which is kind of what I want to talk about. Now, I did not have a skit lined up for good old Chuck Woodson. Charles Woodson is retiring from ESPN after three years. So this basically means that ESPN now is going to be full of nothing but Raider haters. So we're not going to get any good analysis from ESPN from now on as Raiders. I mean, here and there we might, but you already know that Charles Woodson was our last dude who was in ESPN who wasn't a complete Raider hater. As a matter of fact, he was all for us. And, you know... Now he's gone. Uh, there is rumors that he may become our defensive back coach. I don't know. I possibly could re- be reporting on that later. I, uh, you know, only time will tell about that one. But I do want to wish Chuck in and well Charles Woodson. I've always called him Chuck, you know. But good old good old Chuck Woodson there. You know, I, I wish him luck in his future endeavors, and it's he's going to really be missed uh, from us Raider fans on ESPN because that was what made ESPN tolerable to watch. Now, I want to move on to what this show is actually about because what we've actually gone in and seen in this last two weeks... It's almost like that we're being trolled. We have no idea where we're playing for 2019. There has been other stadium options that have been brought about, and that's part of the reason why I wanted to do this video. So why don't we go ahead and hop into the intro, and then we're going to go ahead and go over every single option that we have 
pros and cons for every single stadium that's coming up, and then my analysis on the end of where we're probably going to wind up by the time that the 2019 season rolls around. So let's just go ahead and get this episode started. So I would like to welcome everybody to another episode of the Raider Critique. And yes, it's another off-season episode because, well, the Raiders can't seem to stay out of the news. The reason why I'm here today is to talk about all the options that we have for stadium relocation for the 2019 season. Now, we all know on why we're even here Why we're even talking about this, because the city of Oakland is suing Mark Davis, and Mark Davis rescinded a $7.5 million offer on the table to rent out O.co for one more season before we went to Las Vegas. There have been a lot of options on the table, and one of them, which is actually what was reported on this week, is that we were it was right after the Super Bowl that we were actually going to to move to Oracle Field in San Francisco, California. Now, of course, this was not set in stone, and even when it was reported, a lot of us, like, I I remember exactly where I was. I was sitting in the chat room watching um, Mikey on Air Nation when the news came in right after the Super Bowl. uh, He was doing a Super Bowl edition of his channel, and... It came in on my Twitter feed, and the next thing I know, it was blowing up all over the place that the Raiders were moving to Oracle Field. Well, shortly after that, the mayor of San Francisco came out and denied the accusation, saying that there would be transportation and infrastructure issues to have the Raiders play at Oracle Field for one season. Now, even though it was approved and agreed upon by the San Francisco Giants, who actually happen to be the owners of this field. Now, this was definitely an option until it was shot down. And then this is also another option, which is obviously not new. It's Levi Stadium. So basically, San Francisco is saying that because of infrastructure issues, and transportation issues and because of how they're building up everything over there on that side of town for the Warriors and everybody else. I don't know exactly what they're building up over there, but supposedly they've got a whole big infrastructure thing that they've got going on over there that they are trying to construct. And if they had the Raiders over there, it would just complicate things. But the real happy and much obliged to let them come to Levi Stadium to where we have to share the field with the 49ers to where they can still reap reap that revenue that the Raiders will bring in for the city of San Francisco. But they're going to put us with our most hated rival from the NFC. And Mark Davis has already said that he does not want to play at Levi Stadium. All right, then we've got Qualcomm in San Diego. Now, I would love to play in Qualcomm in San Diego, and I do believe that we will wind up play, be playing in California, but I heard something else about how they don't want the Raiders to come down here to San Diego. So, if we're not going to be playing in San Diego, we're not going to be playing at Levi Stadium. Well, what about the Alamo Dome in San Antonio? Well, Obviously, that's not an option because Mark Davis doesn't like the turf in San Antonio. And that just being one reason, you know, because he did spend all that money on those practice facilities a couple years back with Jack Del Rio as coach, you know, and I'm pretty sure that he still probably wants to use that. Now, the other option and most viable option outside of where we are already 
is Sam Boyd Stadium in Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, I've already heard that this stadium is not pro-ready. Now, this is just in the reports of the news and things like that from what I've heard all around the world of internet and, of course, ESPN and also your all your other news sources that are out there, NFL Network. They don't want to move to Sam Boyd Stadium either. So, if we can't go to the Alamo Dome because of the turf, and we can't go to Qualcomm in San Diego for some other apparent reason, probably because, you know, San Diego hates the Raiders. We don't want to play in Levi Stadium. We've already been denied at Oracle Field. What else is left? Odaco Coliseum. Now, he rescinded a $7.5 million deal to play back at Odako because he is, from what is reported, he doesn't want that money to be used to sue him. And that I can understand. And then not only on top of that, but if he is buckled to go back to Odako, don't you think that he's going to be forced to pay more? For that one season in Oakland and the $7.5 million that he offered months ago? I do believe so, and I do believe that California is out to get Mark Davis. I think that they're out to actually fix all of their budget problems throughout the whole state by jacking up this man's rent, denying him access to stadiums that aren't being used, like a stadium in San Diego, or uh, an approved deal at Oracle Field where... He can still use the practice facilities that he dumped all that money into when Del Rio was coach. They're stonewalling him at every point that they can because they're a bunch of crybaby sissies who are angry at Mark Davis because he's taking the Raiders and that revenue out of the state of California. Now, of course, this is only opinion. This is my opinion, but this is what this is what politicians do. Okay, and I hate to have to bring politics into anything football, but in this episode, I have to do the stupid stuff like this because this is how politics works. This is how they play hardball. Okay, so we'll just stonewall him in everywhere that he wants to go and make him to where he has to play at a place like Sam Boyd Stadium or number two, go back to O.Co. And if he goes back to O.Co., he can at least still use the practice facilities that he put in there. Now, from Las Vegas, Nevada, I don't know if they would do that or not. That's quite a commute, but I mean, it's only a two and a half hour drive. And I'm sure they fly by plane, you know, be about 30 minutes. But then again, that stadium is not NFL ready. So, you know, you guys can do the math on this. I mean, literally... I think we're going to wind up going back to O.co and they're going to wind up charging him about 12 to 13 million dollars for one year. Especially with how disgruntled the city of Oakland is. And then on top of that, they're probably going to take that money and sue him for more. I feel really bad for Mark Davis in this aspect because just because he wants to better the stadium and do what his dad was trying to do for so many years before, being stonewalled by the state of California at every turn. He had to leave California to do it, and this is probably the reason why Al never wanted to do that, because he knew that they would do something like this. Now, there's been some other stuff in the news also from this week, and stuff that I don't even want to report on. But other people bring it to my attention that this is what is going on in um, the news today for rumors. And like I said, I don't like to even report rumors or things like that. But this, this is something that needs to be addressed because nobody else is really talking about it. Either that or everybody else has already done a video before it ha has happened. So a lot of other people will probably talk about this already coming in their next videos. 
but let me go ahead and flop on over here and get it to where you guys can see the screen. We'll go ahead and flop over to the desktop and to where we can go ahead and read this article that came out earlier this week. As a matter of fact, it came out on February 7th, 2019, written by a Graham Greemore. And this is on, and don't hate me, Raider Nation, but I know this word is not like really promotable and, and really not supposed to be said, but it's from Queerty.com. And this male model alleges gay affair with NFL star PJ Hall and says that he has receipts to prove it. Now, first off, I would like to go ahead and say my little bit of peace on this. Um, last time I checked, when it came to football IQ, it didn't matter what your sexuality was, whether you are a gay or lesbian or straight person. I don't believe that that affects the game of football. I'm not here to critique on how people live. I'm not here to critique people's lives. I'm not here to judge anyone or pass judgment on anyone for the person that they are. I'm definitely not here to discriminate on race, sexual orientation, religion, and uh, any of that other stuff. Yeah, I'm not here to discriminate on anything about that. I'm here to, to uh, critique the way that somebody plays football. And the way a team plays football and how they're ran. To see something like this come out. All right. And I, well, I'm just going to go ahead and read it to you. Because it's it, it took me by surprise as well. Because an amateur male model by the name of Malik Joseph. Claims he engaged in a romantic relationship with PJ Hall of the Oakland Raiders. Black Sports Online reports. On his Instagram story this week, Joseph shared text messages allegedly sent to him from 23-year-old Hall claiming that they proved the rookie NFL player likes men. He also encouraged his 31,000 followers to harass Hall's girlfriend over direct message. Now, here is, I'm not going to scroll through it real fast to where everybody can read it. And, you know, this is the first time I'm actually reading it, too. So, I'm here with you. So, anyway. Joseph said that he decided to go public with the relationship after he learned that Hall had a girlfriend. He went on to suggest that there may be other closeted men, including someone running for Atlanta City Council, who he's hooked up with and he's getting ready to expose. And here's another tweet that he wrote about that. How you running for Atlanta City Council and you shitting on... Now, I'm not going to say any of those words. All of Atlanta Raw, and I tell you about three of these. Y'all wanted this Malik to come out. Let's do it. I need some respect on my motherfucking name. I'll say that one, I guess. And then, of course, you could just go ahead and read that as well. I'm not going to read it out to you, but a rep for Hall tells Black Sports Online the story is totally false and accuses Joseph of making defamatory and slanderous accusations against the NFLer, adding that Joseph has a history of extorting men. The rep did not say whether Hall's plans to pursue any legal action against the OnlyFans model. Meanwhile, Hall himself took to Twitter to deny the accusations and said that he and his girlfriend are all good. Now, I do have to comment on this. And I'm not going to comment on PJ Hall. I'm not even worried about what PJ Hall's sexual orientation is. What P.J. Hall is going through is what a lot of these young NFL players go through when they first make it rich. Kind of like what happened to Kareem Hunt. You got this guy 
who wants to make these derogatory and defamatory statements about you. And he probably told PJ Hall that he was going to go public with this unless he got some money. Now, of course, I don't have any insight on this, but this is just how I see it. You know? Now, his sexual orientation doesn't bother me whatsoever. Gay or straight, if you can play football, you can play football. And I could care less on what your sexual orientation is. I'm not going to discriminate you on anything about your personal life and what you like to do for fun. But I am going to discriminate on this guy here, uh, Malik Joseph, for coming out and saying this about this man, basically trying to extort money from him. It's kind of like what happened with Donald Penn and that enraged fan last season. Season before last, I guess what you would call it now, since we're in the off-season of 2018. Well, off-season of 2019, but damn, you know. Can't believe it's already been that long. But this guy here is just looking for his 15 minutes of fame. He's looking... He's got 31,000 followers. He's obviously been doing an excellent job on online, on Twitter, doing whatever he does. But it, all that means is that there's just 31,000 people who are out there just like him, trying to wreck people's homes and split people apart and ruin people's lives. Well, I really wish this dude would have done a little bit of research to come and actually find out that if you are gay... And you're playing football. The Raiders is probably one of the best places to go, especially with as diverse as the Oakland Raider Nation is, especially California. It's all the same. And it has been like that for 15 years. This is not the 30s. You thought this was actually going to hurt this man? The only thing that you're actually going to hurt on this man is his relationship with his girlfriend. And you may have failed at that. All for your 15 minutes of fame. You should be disgusted with, your sh with yourself. You should be disappointed in yourself for coming up with such a lackluster approach. Whether it's true or not is besides the fact. What is fact is that you can tell by the way that he writes his uh, tweets and, and how he does it, that he enjoys doing things like this. So how is he even credible? Like I said, I should not even have to comment on this. But because this so-called reporter wanted to bring it out, and then, of course, somebody had to ask me about it in a comment section on one of Mikey's videos. This Graham Greemore dude had to report this. And then, of course, nobody wants to talk about it because it's such a touchy subject. I understand it's a very touchy subject, but I, I side with P.J. Hall here. Regardless of his sexual orientation, his personal life is his personal life. That should be his personal life. It's just like how I don't comment on Derek Carr playing video games. It's his personal life. If he wants to run a YouTube channel and he wants to play PUBG all the time, cool. I'm not going to judge him for it. You know? I'm not going to be one of the guys going, man, you should be out there really thinking about playing football. Nah. What you do on your personal time is what you do on your personal time. I have no objections to that. And the rest of us should think the same. Because we're too busy worried about trying to discriminate on each other for every single solitary small thing. Oh, his teeth aren't wide enough. Oh, this guy plays video games in his off time. Oh, this guy said this. Oh, this guy said that. Oh, this guy's gay. This guy's straight. Let's get off discriminating against one another. Because it's not doing anything except for making one party, if not both parties, look extremely ignorant. And I mean, that's literally all I have to say about that situation.
I do want to thank everybody for stopping by the Raider Critique, man. This is the, I guess what you would call the third off-season episode. Uh, I don't know exactly how many more I will be doing, but I have enjoyed my time getting on here, and I really can't wait until the draft, until we can actually get some real news going on here, and I can talk about football. Uh, but I do appreciate all the new subscribers that have registered to the channel and all the old subscribers who have stuck around and hung out and watched these videos all the way through. Now, I know some of you, you don't really get the time to do all that. And some of you guys listen to me. I know there's a few overseas that, you know, that this is how they, you know, they come over here to check me out and, and this is how they get some of their Raider news. Well, I'm sorry for all the political United States bullshit that goes on over here. I don't like reporting on it, but sometimes, uh, you know, it just forces its ugly face to where somebody does have to comment about it. But I want to thank everybody for stopping by. I'm going to try to drop another video as news comes in. Now, if if it's not relevant, I'm not reporting about it, kind of like the Stephen A. Derek Carr uh, fiasco. Even though that was really big for a week, I still don't call it relevant. And I don't believe that anybody is going to remember it or even care about it here in probably another month. Now, I will say this about that. instead, Derek Carr, instead of getting mad and going on Twitter and have the, you know, and just feeding into those clowns. Next time, and I'm, I'm sure you're already doing it. That's that's why you're doing what you're doing. Shut them up by your play on the field, bro. Come out there in 2016 form and just wreck shop and throw the ball all over defenses, putting yourself back in MVP talks. Once you do that, all of those media guys will shut up. I assure you that, and then everybody will be back kissing your ass. I promise you that, man. So anyway, I am the Raider Critique. This was uh, your third off-season episode. I'm going to go ahead and sign on out of here. I hope you guys have a wonderful Valentine's Day. I guess that's the next holiday coming up. And I hope everybody had a wonderful Super Bowl. Well, I don't know, man. It was one of the most terrible games I've ever watched. To be honest with you, I think I was more in my phone than I was watching the game. And then when halftime came up, I did not want to watch Maroon 5, so I hopped over and I watched NXT in that three-man tag match that they had with the Velveteen Dream and Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano. And yeah, Man, it was off the chain. At least halftime was awesome on the WWE side, even though I don't really watch them very much. But NXT is cool, man. So I'm going to go ahead and sign on out of here. I'll see you guys on the next video. As always, man, Raider Nation for life. Let's get it.